Hello and welcome back to Minecraft. Over the years, this channel has showcased all kinds of tips and tricks from every weird corner of the game. Minecraft 1.13 has brought so many new things that we need to do something special. During the long snapshot season, I've been stockpiling some of my favourite new tricks, quirks and mechanics, all for one big bonanza. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you like what you see. I'm Zoe Sark and let's look at some brand spanking new tricks for Minecraft 1.13. Let's begin with a sneaky little trap. Sail around the oceans for long enough and you're bound to run into a few shipwrecks. Everyone's on the lookout for these because they contain and lead to some pretty nice loot. Seems like a great opportunity for some mischief. This trick is simple, but if you do it right, no one will suspect a thing. We're going to rig the buried treasure. Now, you can set up any kind of trap you like here, something mean, something funny, maybe just a stern warning not to trust pirates in the future. What's vital is the setup. It's a catch-22. You need to know where the treasure's buried to rig it, but if you look at the map, it'll be obvious someone's already been here. So what do you do? Well, we thank Mo Yang for being resourceful when it comes to reusing code. See, treasure maps are almost identical to regular maps and share practically all their features. It's these features that are going to let us erase our fingerprints as if we were never there to begin with. The first step is to clone the map, but make sure not to look at the original. Now this might seem like enough, but the issue is that cloned maps are all linked together. Even if you don't look at the original, the cloned map will still fill it out nonetheless. So let's be even more conniving. Instead of looking at your newly cloned map, we'll use another map feature that allows you to zoom them out. The kicker here is that when you create a zoomed out map, it actually generates a brand new map ID. The bond between the original is severed, so you can finally take a gander at where X marks the spot. Our next trick is old Trouty in those early days of a new world. In fact, let's just keep this between you and me, otherwise I might get in trouble. So this trick is for fishing and getting the most of your money. It's actually pretty much a five finger discount. I discovered this when experimenting with dual wielding. I was trying to see if you could cast two lines at once. Short answer, you can't. But I did notice some unusual behavior. It seems like when you juggle between two rods, the line maintains its connection. If you're in fishing mode, the session isn't interrupted when you swap a fishing rod for another fishing rod. This is cool because fishing mechanics and durability mechanics are two separate things. When you cast a line, the instant the bar is created, the game has already determined what enchantments, timings, chances and rewards you're going to get. On the other hand, tool durability is only applied when it succeeds. A pickaxe doesn't take damage until the block is actually mined and a fishing rod doesn't until an item has been caught. To put this simply, you can have enchantments applied without actually using your enchanted rod. As long as you cast the line using the enchanted fishing rod, it doesn't actually matter what rod physically fishes the item up. Clearly, this is very useful early game, because fishing rods only have 64 durability. If you have luck of the sea and lure, but don't yet have mending and breaking, you can use a dud rod to take the damage, while your enchanted rod remains pristine. I know for a fact that this trick is going to be used extensively by everyone going forward because it's not only crazy useful, but one of the funnest things ever too. Now, we can't actually ride dolphins, because of reasons, but they did instead add a feature that more than makes up for it. Dolphin's Grace is a brand new status effect that is essentially the swimming equivalent of a speed potion. It's activated when you sprint underwater in the vicinity of dolphins and you get a nice little increase in speed. The fun part? This effect actually stacks with Depth Strider, allowing you to cover absurd distance. The speed rivals Elytra, but unlike Elytra, nothing here is particularly endgame. Given how accessible and useful this mechanic is, I have no doubt that Dolphin Boosters are going to become a big thing. I tried to work out the best approach to designing these. At first, leads seemed like a good idea where the dolphin is dragged along with you to reapply the status effect indefinitely, but the sheer speed snap the leash instantly, rendering it ineffective. Instead, it's better to plan a pre-prepared route with booster stations to recharge along the way. One simple design is to construct rings along the ocean bed. These are easy to build and, let's face it, it's really satisfying to shoot through them. A problem you'll encounter is that dolphins interchangeably need both air and water to survive. Keep them in one for too long and they'll suffocate. To solve this, tie them to a lead near the surface so they can occasionally get some air. For a more reliable dolphin booster, you'll probably want to build a dedicated pipe network deep underground to get around your world. 
These can just be one block tunnels with a dolphin stationed every so often to replenish the status effect. If you've been playing Minecraft recently, you've probably bumped into one of these guys. The pufferfish is a funny little mob. That is until you get close to it and get yourself poisoned. You may have seen a few traps based around this mechanic and you might be thinking that's what this trick is about, but it's not. Yes, these guys can poison you, but they do something else that nearly no other mob can do. See, pufferfish have three different states. Shrunken, partially inflated and fully inflated. The really cool thing though is that the hitbox adapts to their current size. The fish inflates and deflates based on proximity, which means there's a level of control over its state. Now, if you cram the fish into this little contraption, when fully inflated, he'll trigger the pressure plate, putting out a signal. This could be used to make an invisible trigger for players, but there's actually another element to all this that makes them even more interesting. Pufferfish are the biggest cowards going. They're afraid of nearly all mobs in the game and will puff up if any of them come close. What this means is you can set up security systems that activate when certain mobs are destroyed or disturbed. Perhaps you own a rare animal or want to display your wealth on an armor stand. You can prime a pufferfish behind the scenes so in the event the mob is stolen or killed, the fish will deflate, output a redstone signal which can do whatever you deem necessary for such a crime. Next up, how about not just a prank but a genuine bona fide illusion? Something pretty neat you can now do is place item frames on every face of a block, above and below. Cool for decoration, but can also be used for some trickery. For this illusion, you're going to need a flat coloured map. If you want a specific colour, you can fill out a 128 by 128 block space with a specific block, or if you want something quick, you can go to an ocean or the end void to get a blue or grey map respectively. This trick is straightforward, but pretty trippy. The idea is that you place item frames on every face of a room and then insert the maps. For the proper effect, you'll need each frame to be completely illuminated, so use glowstone or sea lanterns to achieve an even tone. So welcome to a place that deprives you of your senses. You could just drop someone in here and let them go crazy. Maybe they're in a 3x3 room, maybe the room stretches to the ends of the universe. They'd honestly both look identical. If you really want to be mean, you could throw in some stuff to mess with their perception, like blocks and entities that look close but are totally off scale. How about another trap? Turtle eggs are weird little blocks that are surprisingly handy for quite a few things. You can of course incubate them if you want, lots and lots of turtles, or you can use them to lure zombies. For some reason zombies absolutely detest turtles, they'll chase them as soon as they hatch and if they see an egg, they'll literally stomp on it. And I was told Minecraft was a family friendly video game. But it's this behaviour that makes this trick possible. See, turtle eggs shatter when stuff jumps on them, though interestingly this isn't limited to jumping, but also just plain old innocent standing. If you stand on an egg for too long, it'll still break. This behaviour reminded me of the classic Super Mario collapsing platforms where you're not allowed to stand on certain tiles for very long. After investigating, I learned that turtle eggs can float in midair, but also when carpet is placed on top, the timer is still set off. Naturally, this can be turned into a really simple collapsing floor mechanic. What's cool is that the timings are somewhat customizable. Each block space can hold up to four eggs, where each of these need to break before the actual block decays. You can make some platforms that are really unstable and others that are a bit more forgiving. Onyx Trick isn't technically exclusive to 1.13, but it's pretty sweet and I've wanted an excuse to show it for a while. When horses were introduced, they needed something in place in the event a player logged off while riding. The solution was to save the horse with the player, so the entity completely vanishes from existence when you exit the world. This was pretty handy because you could protect your horse from being stolen while you're away. But since boats were overhauled and introduced two seats, you can now bring nearly any mob along with you into limbo. This is great if you own a really precious mob that you want to 100% make sure is safe. Of course, you can also use it for some nastier ideas. Now, I'm not giving you instructions here, this is all for theoretical learning purposes. But were you to insert, say, a creeper into the boat, log out at a pre-planned location and later bring along a victim, it sure would be quite the sight to see a creeper materialise out of literal thin air and explode. But you know, that's, that's just a crazy idea. Secret codes are always fun, so let's look at just that. An interesting new mechanic is turtles' migratory behaviour. They spawn on beaches, then head to the oceans to explore the world. But strangely, in order to lay eggs, they need to return to the specific block where they initially spawned. 
Additionally, they won't lay eggs on anything but regular sand. What's interesting about this is you can control the mob to pathfind pretty much anywhere you like. Just place a turtle egg down somewhere, wait for it to hatch, and the turtle will be forever bound to that coordinate. You can try a few things with this mechanic. For example, you could use your turtles as minions to carry out your evil agenda. Though, of course, very, very slowly. Maybe you forgot to lock your front door. Well, the turtle can run back and check. Another thing to try is sending scrambled messages. Each turtle is assigned a letter where the message is unreadable until all the turtles line up to reveal whatever it says. What immediately caught my eye was tridents. I thought the enchantments were neat, so started toying around with them. That's when I noticed something special about the loyalty enchantment. This thing has a few weird things about it, like when the trident is returning, it can phase through absolutely everything as if it were air. What's more is it has a hitbox that can collide with things like tripwire, even being able to cause redstone signals. Loyal tridents appear to return to you no matter the distance, granted the chunks loaded. With a level 1 enchantment, running in circles causes the trident to orbit you, almost like a flail. It can't damage anything, but it can trigger redstone inputs. I found this all quite intriguing, so looked into what else the trident could do. I lobbed it into a bubble column, and was surprised to see it was actually being pushed. Through testing, it seems like a column of around 30 blocks tall and 4x4 in width creates a fairly stable stasis pool, where the trident will vibrate indefinitely. There's lots this mechanic could do, but I thought a notification system would be pretty neat. In order to make the trident return to its owner, the stasis pool must be disrupted to force the trident to land. By surrounding the ring with dispensers and buckets, you can throw the trident off balance when powered. Because the trident is an item, you can rename it to give the notification additional context. A wacky new status effect added is the aptly named slow falling effect. This causes a player or mob to float down like a feather and disables fall damage. This is more than enough fun in its own right, but if you combine it with an elytra, you get something even better. The combo makes you light as an atom, you practically hover on the spot with very little descent. As great as elytra are, normally you have to remain at high speeds to stay airborne, which doesn't give you a chance to really idly look around. This effect is excellent for viewing builds at angles you don't normally see, but is also great for scouting out an area. At such a snail crawl, you actually have time to aim a bow without accidentally dive bombing. But this trick also allows you to overcome one of the most aggravating parts of this game, transporting animals. Under normal circumstances, you can't transport animals by air because the speed instantly snaps the lead, plummeting the cargo to its doom. But with such mild speeds, you can actually drag animals through the sky without much fuss. If it does snap, throwing a potion on the animal ensures its survival. You can even snatch mobs off the ground without ever touching down. So for now, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed. If you had a favorite trick, let me know. And if you're interested in more 1.13 stuff, check out this video where I go over tweaks and small changes that I've made in the update. Cheers very much for tuning in. I've been Simply Sark, and I'll see you next time.